are Charles Senek, what are the new measures and new tools of the European Union mentioned in this de radicalization report that was presented today? Well, I'm afraid to say, as the, I did the opinion on the Foreign Affairs Committee for it, there's nothing particularly new in the report. It's a series of measures and uh, a wish list based on some of the better practice. We've seen the German model whereby they've tried to spend money on identifying uh, people who may be at risk of being radicalized, identifying <coughs> who the um, hate uh, preachers are in certain uh, mosques and finding out the individuals attending these mosques and relying on the moderate uh, uh, individuals and imams and members of the community who can ring a helpline and say they're worried about their brother or their father who suddenly become uh, different in their pattern of behavior, more devout, changing their dress, uh, watching um, internet uh, sites which are full of hate speech or incitation to hatred or terrorist behavior uh, or identifying ISIS, I, you know, Islamic, so-called Islamic State recruitment uh, individual online. These are the kind of measures, they're all practical suggestions which are already happening in our member states. A number of them are spending money. You know, we're spending a lot of money in the United Kingdom, Germany is spending a lot of money, France has spent a lot of money, a lot of dialogue with the uh, Muslim uh, community leadership. But none of it has worked, I'm afraid, uh, successfully beyond doubt. Uh, I made a speech yesterday in which I said, of course, we have to try all these measures of prevention, de you know, preventing radicalization, uh, but it's very, very hard. The numbers of individuals are very large now. You know, it's in the thousands, 5,000 or so have been to uh, Syria and Iraq uh, and joined ISIL. Many have come back. There's a serious security threat, uh, as we saw uh, in the terrible atrocities in Paris last week. Um, we have the large refugee flow, you know, and within that a small number, no doubt, are posing as refugees, but in reality they are hardened, radicalized fighters, jihadists coming back to Europe. In fact, two, at least two of the eight were uh, believed to have come through Greece and through the Balkans. These are very, very serious issues. I, I, you know, one of the issues that we should be pushing in this parliament, which is technically not de-radicalization, it's more about um, security is the passenger name recognition, which the Parliament refused to pass. It sent it to the European Court of Justice. These are the kind of security measures we need, now need. Uh, already the interior ministers have met and have said that all EU citizens entering the um, European Union from the external borders have to be name checked across all the databases for wanted uh, terrorists. All these things, I, I think we now need to go to managing the terrorist threat rather than preventing radicalization. Preventing radicalization um, is at best a hope, you know, that we can do things on the soft side by education, training, counter narratives and so on. I'm skeptical that I haven't seen great results and there's not much evidence that a lot of it's worked and it's a very, very expensive process. And as the numbers get bigger, it becomes almost impossible to fund and do successfully. You'd need to have an army of individuals monitoring the thousands of potential, potentially radicalized individuals in, in, our, in some of our countries like France, Belgium, uh, Germany, Austria, United Kingdom, and so on. So it's a very tall order, but it's worth having the debate. I mean, obviously, we, we hope that it can have some success, but we've now, we're now up against the serious terrorist threat. You know, ISIS is a phenomenon we haven't really seen before on this scale. It controls masses of territory, has hundreds of millions of dollars of cash to spend, and an army of people that have either gone there and become jihadi fighters and been trained and come back, or people that it's recruiting online are sympathetic to its cause, uh, as we see in Belgium and in Paris. Uh, and so let's get the practical security measures in place. Personally, my view is that unless we can strengthen the external borders very, very strongly and have good intelligence and police cooperation, which is non-existent, uh, very, very unfortunately in this area, uh, Europol hasn't really done its job properly. We're going to see the end of Schengen, frankly. And we're in danger of seeing the end of, end of the whole of the European project. It's, it's a really serious existential threat to the European Union. And in my country, you know, which is now about to go through a referendum 
to stay or leave the European Union. This is a gift to the Eurosceptics because the Eurosceptics like UKIP are blaming it on the European Union, the lack of borders, the lack of internal controls, and the kind of liberal uh, view that, uh, you know, that they can put their hand, head in the sand and the whole problem will go away. Well, it's not going away, it's getting worse, and we need firm leadership and we need tough measures.